everyone, my name is Seth Thompson and in this video series I will be showing you how to create this lantern using a lot of the standard features out of ZBrush such as DynaMesh and the Transpose tools but focusing more on how you can really leverage the new features from 4 or 5 such as panel loops and the see-through mode which is at the top of the screen here uh, to quickly make something as detailed as this in a short amount of time. So first things first, if you want to be able to follow along step by step with the process of creating this, you're going to need to download a few images from ZBrush. So I have a post that I put up recently titled Unmystified. My username is Bokachan1000, but you can just type Unmystified into the ZBrush Central site up here. And uh, U-N-M-Y-S-T-I-F-I-E-D, search that. And that's going to bring up the post that I put on here. You can just come in here. Uh, if you want, you can check out some of the different images that I put in. The lantern, as you can see, is a small portion of this. Uh, so if you go down further through the image, um, you can check out some other stuff I got. But the important one you want is down close to the bottom of this page. Uh, we want to take this image, so either just copy and paste this image to your desktop or save it. And we'll be referencing this to trace a lot of our shapes with masking modes and uh, build based off this. So. Going back to ZBrush, um, the first step in this tutorial, what I want to show you guys is just how we can use panel loops and we're going to do our base setup for our asset and then we'll go step by step through some different procedures. So first thing, basically I made this entire um, lantern just out of a cylinder primitive. So let's go ahead and uh, click that, uh, cylinder primitive. So now we have that in our scene. Uh, I'm going to press Shift F because I want to see my uh, polyframe here. And now I'm going to go down to the initialize panel. Uh, this is something that I notice a lot of people don't use. It's very handy and um, you can quickly get some interesting shapes and change some of their base levels. So I want six sides on this because my lantern had six sides. So I'm just going to enter that. And also these vertical divisions, I don't need any. So I'm just going to turn that off. And now I have a cylinder that we can use. The next thing I want to do is get this rotated so that this front face is um, facing us. And I'm going to turn off perspective mode because I want to work out of orthographic view as we do this. So this is where see-through mode comes in play. Um, if you use this now, uh, we can see our ZBrush image underneath. Let's take that image that we copied. And I'm going to use Photoshop. You can use any browser that you want that you can zoom in and out of. And now we have this image that we're going to use for tracing some of our shapes. So let me get back to ZBrush here. And now if we go to see-through mode, we can see this underneath. So I want to see that a little bit while I'm working. And now you can see I can actually move my object. Uh, the goal that I want to do here is this front face that looks white. I want to match this up to my front panel of my lantern because that's what I'm going to create first and then I'm going to cut off some different portions so that we can make our um, top of the lantern this lid as well as these dragons you see here and then also the bottom of this so I'm going to just kind of eyeball this and zoom in uh, not actually scaling my object but just zooming in on my viewport and lining this up I want this to be come to the top here so I'm going to scale this up a little bit using that deformation tool here on the right. I'm going to be going back to this a lot. And the reason I want to use this cylinder primitive is it keeps the uh, pivot point in the center of world space for this object, or I guess center of local space. And that's going to be really useful later whenever we start using radial symmetry and copying this around to different locations. So go ahead and uh, scale this up. I'm going to do it on the Z axis only because I just want to go vertical. And I'm going to just check this again, line this up a bit. We need to go a little bit more. And that's good enough. So now what I want to do is I'm going to isolate the different portions that are going to make up all of my pieces for my lantern. So let's turn off see-through mode. And now that we have this, I'm going to duplicate this a few times. So as you can see here, we have our uh, cylinder. Let's just duplicate this and actually before we do it let's make a mesh uh, poly mesh 3d we need to do this with any zbrush primitive so click on that now we can actually work on the mesh and just come in here and you just hit duplicate and duplicate and duplicate I want four pieces the reason why is I'm gonna make a lid of a little pie piece here and then that front lattice piece and then I'm gonna do another for the dragon and another for the base 
For right now, let's go ahead and cut out the pieces that we want for this. So first off, we're going to cut this front face off, and the way that I'm going to do that is using our marquee selections. And I'm going to do that by pressing Control, Shift, and Alt, and this will hide parts that I don't want to see. So I'm just hiding everything but the front face. So if you look now, the front and the back is gone. That's all I want. So I'm going to come into our geometry panel now, and I'm going to tell it Delete Hidden under Modify Topology. So just come in here, hit Delete Hidden, and now this is just by itself, which is what we want. So let's go ahead and uh, prepare our other pieces. This is going to become our lid eventually. So on this one, I just want to keep this one pie wedge here. So Control Shift Alt again, and click. That hides everything but the top. Control Shift Alt click again and again. And now we have that top little pie wedge, and believe it or not, that'll become the lid of our lantern. So now we're going to take this one once again, go down to Geometry, and under Modify Topology, Delete Hidden. So now we have a part that will become our top here. Uh, we could name these, I'm not too worried about it. So let's go to this next piece here. This one eventually will become our dragon, so just like the front piece here, just to repeat, I'm going to uh, hide the sides I don't need and hide this piece and I'm just going to go in and delete hidden on this geometry as well. And finally, I want to have my bottom piece. What this is going to become is the, the bottom of our lantern here. So this one we don't want to actually delete anything off of, but we do need to change the scale of the top to bottom. So this one, once again, I want to do an exact deformation. Uh, this is why I'm not using my transpose tools up here. I'm just going to come in here. Deformation, once again, let's isolate it to the z-axis only, and let's just decrease this a couple times on the size. And something like this looks pretty good to me. I'm going to look at the see-through mode again. And it's a little bit bigger than I want, but I think it'll serve our purposes. Soon I'll move it down, but for now I'm not worried about it. So let's go ahead and go back to our front panel piece. That's going to be our piece right here. And what this is going to become is our section right back here. Now before I get into all the details of this, uh, to conclude this first introductory video, I want to show you what the panel loops features are going to do just because we're using it so many times. And then we'll stop this part of the video and jump into the next one. So the first thing we want to do for this is let's give it some subdivisions so that we can actually work on it. So come in here, make sure you turn off smooth. If you don't, when you divide, see how it's shrinking? That's because it doesn't have supporting edges. So just turn this off, and then we can divide in here and uh, still keep all of our sharp edges. This is really good for hard surface modeling for any of you that do it. Uh, I'm going to subdivide this maybe about nine times, 60,000 polys or so. looks pretty good to me. Um, this is good. This is just fine. So let's keep that. One thing I'm going to do, too, is I'm going to activate our symmetry. You can do it with a hotkey X or up here under Transform. Just activate symmetry, and we're going to do this on the Y with the mirror activated. So now if we were to paint, you see that we get um, this on both sides. So before I show you how to make the panel loops, let's just duplicate this one time. So um, duplicate right here, so now we have an extra. And now I'm going to show you uh, what the panel loops is going to be doing. So all you have to do is just come in here and use your control key to do a mask and just make whatever kind of shape you think is cool um, you know this could be like a bottle opener or something I'll just get something in here going fast this is fine um, also too you know control will uh, blur your mask control clicking uh, but I want to control shift click to sharpen my mask this looks pretty cool to me now I'm gonna make a poly group out of this by doing uh, control W and now you can see the poly group and then I'm going to do a control shift click on a poly group just to isolate the one that I want and once again I'm going to come down here as we were doing earlier to delete hidden um, you're going to see an error pop up this is telling you that you have to delete your lower level of geometry first so let's do that and then we can delete hidden if you don't do that you won't be able to do it so now we have our base topology that we want and now if you come in here to Edge Loop, expand that, and you'll see down here that since 405 there's a new feature that's been added. This is the panel loops. 
So just come in and really quick by default, let's zoom in a bit so you can see a bit more of what's happening. Just hit this and you'll notice that you get a little bit of an extrude here. So let's undo that and let's move this thickness up to about 0.04. I found that ranges between 0.03 to 0.06 are pretty good for me for most of what I'm doing, uh, especially for this lantern. Now you can see the thickness is boosted up a bit. So one other thing I want you guys to take a look at, because this is important for our symmetry to work properly later, is watch where this uh, extrudes from. It's actually extruding from the back going forward. So if I do it again, you can see it coming forward. If you go down here to elevation, it's set to 100 by default. This means it's going to a positive value. You could also go to a negative value and you'll see it going backwards now. Set this to zero. We're just gonna do this every single time that we use panel loops in this tutorial. So we set this to zero, and now you'll notice that it's going forwards and backwards. And the reason that is important is because later, like if we want to come in here, and see how I'm drawing on this, if we want symmetry to work on the back, we'd be able to come up here and activate uh, symmetry for X as well. And you'll see that it's starting to work on the back a little. It's not doing exactly what I want, but uh, you'll see a little bit later. So just get used to using that as the elevation in the center at uh, zero. The final thing I want to show you is you'll notice that the edges here we're getting kind of a nice bevel like a, a three-stage bevel that comes around. If you expand your bevel profile here this is basically what's happening. It's just extruding and making this shape. So let's hit this reset button and let's drag out a curve that's a little bit smoother. This is pretty cool for me. If you need to get rid of some of these just take one of these and drag them off. And now if we do this again and it's going to smooth out just a little bit more rounding the edges and that's kind of the feel that I want for this cast iron look on our lantern. So the final thing that I'm going to do in this process, you can see here uh, we're getting a nice shape. Let's just run that one more time and what you'll see me using a lot in this tutorial is I'll also come in here with the deformation. Expand that underneath these settings. There's a couple new features that were in here from four or five crisp edges groups features. I recommend you play with those, but I'm going to be using primarily for this tutorial the relax because I can come in here and just do that really quickly and we'll get something that feels uh, a lot more like a cast iron shape that you see quite often in here. There's more soft edges. And then there you have it. You got a little piece that will come out like that. So now you see. The, this is the technique I'm going to be using over and over to make this lantern and believe it or not that lantern I was able to make in about one hour. So let's go ahead and clean this up. Let's just delete this out of our file and now we have remaining left uh, you know our triangle piece and our two front pieces and then the base for this. So that's the first part for this tutorial and on the next part I'm going to show you how to go ahead and make the front facing piece on this. So thank you for this part so far and uh, let's jump to the next video.